Hello everybody, welcome to a British audio file. I'm here again with Ian from eAcoustics. So what have you got in terms of honorable mentions before you go on to your pick, anything else? Oh yeah, so the um, Q Acoustics 3030i. In my living room, I use a pair of the Q Acoustics 3050i. I have a credenza in my dining room that is about seven plus feet wide. So I have the speakers on either side of the wood credenza and I have them pulled about eight inches from the wall. I have enough space between my dining room table chairs and the credenza. And I use the credenza. I have a turntable on there integrated in a streamer. And I've, I've just, I have never felt the need to remove those speakers from that room. It, 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 it just, it just sounds great all the time with everything. I've used it now in probably a dozen reviews just in the last year, like because it's such a reliable pair of speakers. So when Q sent me the 3030i, you know, I wasn't sure if it was going to be like a smaller version of that, or was it going to be just essentially a beefier sounding 3020i, which you know Q sold gazillions of in the UK. I really like the 3030i, but my only recommendation to anyone who's considering it is that it needs more power than less. And it's weird because on the 3050i, I can even get away with my Croft, or I can even get away with the NAD 316BE V2, the synergy between those two integrated amplifiers and the larger speaker is much it's better. Works. Yeah, it just works. And I find that with like the 3030i, I almost have to like drag out Either, either either bigger amplifiers, or I have to really really raise the volume. I, I tried the Unity Atom on it. Um, I've used the Cyrus Audio on it. I've used the Vincent Audio from Germany on it. Uh, the Audio Lab, you know, six thousand A that you and I both really like. And I find that it needs more power than less. Can be the case sometimes with bookshelf speakers. It's just for the big the floor standing version is just more dynamic so that in order to get some yeah it's um, not it's not that to wake, I, yeah. yeah you just have to feed them with some power to wake them up yeah sometimes but some but, but it's a really but it's a really pleasant speaker yeah. and it has a really really sort of nice sounding tweeter and the treble it never really gets hard and, and i've i've driven it like I, I i've put 200 watts of class ab through it and like just you know, revved it up with Motorhead and Rammstein, and you know, really tried to see how you know, how far I could push it. And they have a lot of bass. You know, that's it. That, that, that's the other thing I think about the thirty thirty i. They have dramatically more bass than the thirty twenty i. They sound larger. Um, they sound more dynamic. Um, and I have them on a pair of ISO acoustic stands. Actually, that actually thins out the sound a little bit. I think it takes some of the the, the low end sort of impact out a little bit. I, I noticed that with every speaker I've put on ISO acoustic stands, it tends to make it a little more analytical sounding or neutral sounding. But the, the 3030i with the right amplifier is just a really good value. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't even think it's $500 in the US and I, th I think it's a great value for the money. Yeah, I think they have even better value in the UK. I'm not quite sure what the price is, but I think it's probably inside 300 pounds. Oh wow! So, so even so yeah, you're right. Even better. It might might be. I think around that price. I think I've seen. I think I've see, certainly seen them. If that's not the re retail price. I've certainly seen them on sale for around that okay. figure. So, um, should we pick our? Should we go with our picks? Yes. Yeah. So yeah. I'll and, go and, with, yeah. Go I'll, ahead. I'll, I'll go with mine first. So mine actually is probably a surprise to some viewers, um, is the KEF LS50 Meta. I'm picking it with one proviso, and that's because I always liked the original LS50, but I wouldn't have chosen the original KEF LS50 because it's a touch bright. bright. Can be. So you'd have to be very careful with partnering equipment, you know, partnering amplifiers and making sure that you haven't got anything upstream that's you know, imparting any brightness. So um, that would have always been my concern but I believe, and I have it on reliable information from people I trust, that that's, the, that's been dealt with in the meta. And if that has been dealt with, that was the only thing that I felt held back what was overall a very, very impressive speaker for the price. It just had excellent detail, superb imaging, yeah. very easy to place in a room. It was a little bit demanding of amplification, but it deserved decent quality amplification. I mean, John Atkinson, who... Most people who are 
seasoned audiophiles will know, but people who are new may not know who was editor in chief at Stereophile for 30 odd years uses yeah. that as his everyday speaker with some very decent amplifiers and source components. That's probably personally, if I was looking at a bookshelf speaker around thousand pounds, it's just under a thousand pounds, 999 pounds yeah. here in the UK. Um, I think um, I could probably put together a very nice system. Oh yeah. That. I mean, I, I was one of the first batch back in the day when the LS50 came out, like the, 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 the I was lucky enough to get a pair to review and I, I, I love the LS50. I, I, I remember the first time I watched a movie through it. I watched a, I watched one of the first, actually, I think I watched Casino Royale through it. I'm a big, I'm a big Daniel Craig fan. I get a lot of, <laughs> I, I get, I get a lot of you, you, you look like Daniel Craig comments. <laughs> and, I, and I don't know why. I mean, I mean, I don't. It doesn't translate on camera, but but I know what I look like in real yeah, life. And, and I walk into Starbucks and, and this, the same That's barista. A good compliment. Is like, oh yeah, the same barista is like, oh yeah, because I have this, I have similar hair, Daniel Craig, and like my. Is it, it must be when you take your shirt off, Ian. No, um, <laughs> and, well, actually, maybe, maybe recently, because uh, the, the weight I've lost, yeah, maybe. But um, uh, I when I walk into Starbucks, the, my friendly barista is always like, oh, Daniel Craig's here, <laughs> yeah. So which, which is very embarrassing, but but it, but it's nice though anyway. But I was a big fan of the LS50 because I thought that as you, I, I just thought it was a very, very engrossing kind of loudspeaker. I remember when I, when I first set it up and I put it inside a credenza and I had it on either side of a TV and I watched Casino Royale and I watched, um, I think I watched Star Wars. I watched one of the uh, horrible prequels and then I watched something else. And I thought to myself, Kef has designed a speaker that's perfect for music and perfect for movies. And I have to say, I've written up almost every speaker in that range, both the wireless and the passive speakers that they have come up with since then. I'm not a huge fan of the wireless ones. I, agree. I, 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 I think the Kef speakers are better passive and I understand the appeal. I mean, I understand why someone would buy a pair of LS 52s or buy why they would buy like the LSX because you know, people want simplicity, you know, and they're gorgeous looking loudspeakers. I mean, they offer a very high level of sound quality, but at the end of the day, if I was buying a pair of CAFs from that series, I would want to go with my own amplifier. Because as you said, they can sound bright. I get your pick of the meta. No, look, they didn't sell tens of thousands of pairs of those loudspeakers because they suck. And they're not inexpensive. So when the LS50 came out, I think it was $1,500. Their competitors went nuts. I, I remember I wrote up the review... And I basically compared it to three or four other speakers that were twice the price. And I said, I would buy the calf over these three speakers without even flinching. Like it's, it's just better. My slight hesitation, like I said, was always, I find it fatiguing for long periods of listening, unless I was very, very careful with what I partnered it with. Right, but, right. But, but I feel that, you know, I have it on reliable information that that's less of an issue with the new one. But I don't think, I can't see how I could put another passive speaker together bookshelf speaker for a thousand pounds and have such a high fidelity system right i, I agree i yeah so, I, i'm i'm 100 in fact if, if you had not picked it i probably would have picked it so right. so, so mine is old school and, and, and mine's going to shock some people but i mean you and i are both big fans of wharfdale i mean i own multiple pairs of wharfdale at home um, I mean, I'm not happy how much the Linton has gone up in the U.S. in the last six months. I mean, I'm sure audiophiles have noticed that the price of speakers has gone up by 10, 20, 30 percent for most companies in the last six months. But the Wharfdale Denton 85th anniversary speaker just kind of works for me in a weird old school kind of way. There's nothing fancy about it. I mean, it has a very cool looking grill cover. I love the look of it. It's one of those speakers that for under $1,000, you partner it with a decent amplifier and, and, you, and you listen to records through it, especially. I was kind of like, I remember the first time I had it here, I listened to it and I was like, this is like kind of spender magic for like one third the price. I'm a huge spender person. I own spender for, I owned a pair of spenders for a decade. I had no desire to get rid of them. In fact, if a mover had not dropped them off the back of a truck, I would still own them. To me, like the Denton 85 are like a Spender Classic Series in a smaller cabinet. And yes, they're made in China. 
what isn't these days unless right. you're, unless you're paying but certainly at the price points that we're talking it's very hard to get away from that if you want something you know you, if you, if it's going to be built built in the UK you're going to get very little for your money at that price well it, instead of being $1500 US they're going to be $3000 US yeah it, you know so it's sort of like you know you know pick your poison in the case of the Dentons it's a boxy looking speaker it's a chunky speaker but I have sat up at night listening to this speaker, some of my favorite records, and just kind of sat back, you know, when you kind of put your legs up on top of the table and you cross your feet and you're listening and you're thinking to yourself, yeah, I could live with this. You know, I, I would, I would, in fact, someone who I am friends with on Twitter who lives here in the US, he has an old vintage Macintosh system and that costs, I, th I think he paid considerably more than what the Dentons are. And he drives a pair of Denton 85 and he's got like a, Thorin's TD-124 table with a very expensive Ortofon cartridge. And he's driving a pair of $995 Denton 85s. And, and I asked him, you know, you've, like, you clearly have the money to buy a better pair of speakers. And he said, no, no, no. He goes, these are the ones for me. I get that. I deliberately kept that off my honorable mentions pick because I knew what your pick, we, we shared what each other's picks were. We didn't necessarily we didn't discuss what we were had as honorable mentions, but I knew right. your pick at this price was the Denton 85. But that's a speaker which is probably even better value in the UK because it's £599. Wow. And um, the Lintons get a lot of attention, but the Denton was around before. And yeah. um, I've always enjoyed that speaker for exactly the same reasons as you said. It's actually, they managed to make it look old school, but you yeah. know, fr wide front baffle and the grill. Um, but it's actually modern drivers. But yes. the other thing that they actually did was they actually made it sound old school as well. It has that vintage sound that a lot of the traditional bookshelves have. Like you said, you know, a Spender or a classic British monitor for a, for a fraction of the price. So, um, yeah, that's a great pick. I have a question, though. Why are – I've noticed this about the UK with Hi-Fi in general. Why are the British brands so much cheaper – in the UK, because it's not like US or Canadian made products are, you know, really any cheaper in you know, those. I mean, I lived in Canada most of my life and I never thought that Canadian hi-fi was all that affordable uh, in Canada and that none of the US brands that I own or have owned were ever really that much cheaper in the US. So I'm curious why brands like um, Q Acoustics and Acoustic Energy and Kef um, why the, yeah why why are they so much cheaper in the uk yeah i mean we, you know when we start talking about bookshelf speakers further up you'll this will come up again so it's a good point i i don't know it has to be something to do with the distribution i would have thought because and it's for some reason i think when they i think the american brands are just much more switched on and probably a bit more aggressive with with their mark get making sure they hit a price point in the uk so they want right. if you're trying to get you know, whatever it is, Polk in the UK, yes, it's going to be slightly more expensive than it is in the US, but the de Delta isn't going to be that much. And I should imagine, I don't know, but I should imagine the reason is that they, the manufacturer makes sure that the distributor gets it at a sensible price. Right. But, uh, no, but, but yeah, no, no, but I think, you know, that there's a lot of really solid options on our, on our lists. And, you know, yeah. um, I, I think if you're getting into Hi-Fi for the first time, buying a pair of high-end bookshelf speakers might make the most sense. Yeah. 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 I think there are, I don't think it's ever been better in terms of what you have on offer, especially at this kind of category where you're looking at stuff, you know, below a thousand pounds or below, you know, $1,200 right. or whatever the equivalent is. Yeah. And uh, we'll, we'll uh, pick this up again sometime soon. Sounds good. Bye everyone. Thank you. Thank you viewers. Thank you. Bye. Bye.